is crafted with these um, end goals in mind. This year, <clears throat> like I said, the, um, the budget is, uh, our discussion is influenced usually by a lot of different factors that we may know a little bit more about at this time, um, but this year we don't. Um, but two of the big ones that we know will be factors, although we don't know any details at this time, are that um, we'll be negotiating a new teacher's contract. Um, our current contract expires at the end of, end of this year. Um, we don't know what the health insurance premium um, increase will be this year, assuming that there is an increase. Um, and in terms of COVID, while we are hoping and planning that next school year will look more like our school years have in the past, we know that uh, COVID has put a lot of pressure on our community and taxpayers' ability to pay. We've heard that loud and clear. And while the state is helping um, schools out and the federal government has helped schools out, um, we know that there is a, a, an impact on taxpayers from, from COVID, and that will certainly be in the back of our minds as well. Quickly, how budgeting works at, at CVSD, the school board basically says what? Um, what we want to see, which is essentially our mission. This is what, at the end of the day, this is what we hope our students all leave with. How that happens, we leave to our administrators and our, um, our teachers. And so this um, diagram basically shows that all of our schools feed into the leadership team, our central office, uh, central office leadership team, that's why we call it POLT, um, is how they are able to deliver um, what the school board is looking for, which is um, the end outcome, the what. How that happens, um, it actually happens year round. Um, the board comes to the community at this time to get their priorities um, and, and listen to them, listen to our stakeholders. And, and that we've been doing through the thought exchange. And I'll give you a prompt to continue that at the end of this presentation. Um, <clears throat> the administrators go and work with, uh, the central office leadership team works with the building administrators who work with their teachers to listen to what they are looking for in terms of opportunities and gaps and which needs need to be addressed. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, all of those, uh, central office meets with each school individually, making sure that um, the decisions are best for kids and meet the board's objectives. All of that is put together and um, presented to the school board over a series of meetings, um, which are set by topics. So we have a special education, a meeting on special education. We have a meeting on instructional programming. We have a meeting on operations. Um, that focuses on the budget more in detail. So some of our budget objectives, as I've said before, are to support our, our mission. We also want to make sure that all of our schools meet or exceed the state education quality standards, which are online. Um, those are things that meet, um, that talk about class sizes and teacher ratios, things like that. We also want to make sure that we have a budget process that moves our system towards equity of resources, um, which I think we are now, we have now accomplished while allowing for local autonomy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we want to encourage uh, innovation, forward thinking. We actually have innovation grants that um, individual schools apply for. Um, and we would like to promote that. We want to, uh, have a budget process that allows for meaningful input from the community and campus leadership. And at the end of the day, we want a budget process that provides adequate resources to support a quality education at a cost that our communities can support. <coughs> our budget objectives for this year are to support our continuous improvement plan, um, which basically is a lot. Um, it supports our proficiency-based learning and reporting, our personalized learning programs, our multi-tiered systems of support, a positive climate and culture, and you're going to hear in just a few minutes a little bit more detail about social-emotional learning, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and early literacy. And this is the part that Jean Jensen usually does, which she talks about um, the operational part that our budget 
um, needs to meet, which is to implement and make sure that we have best practices in school safety and security, and that all of our buildings, grounds, transportation, food services, HR information technology is all in compliance and is meeting the needs of our students. Um, this is just a brief look at where our uh, spending is this year. Um, and you can see the majority of our, our budget is made up of instructional programs, special education, um, and instructional support, which is where the majority of our spending should be. So I'm going to turn this over to Cassandra for social emotional learning. And can you advance this on your own, Cassandra, or do you need me to? All right, so just let me know when to go. Awesome. Thank you, Lynn. Hi, everyone. My name is Cassandra Townsend, and I'm the Director of Special Education at Charlotte Central School and the Director of Behavior Systems at CBSD. I also support SEL efforts across our district, along with a fabulous group of talented faculty and staff. As you may know, our district is committed to attending to the social emotional learning needs of our students and staff in our community. Although social emotional learning is something our teachers, counselors, and staff attend to every day in every school year, as you can imagine, now is even more important than ever. As you can see from this visual, on the left, you'll notice social emotional learning is really at the foundation of our mission across CVSD to create uh, citizens who think creatively live respectfully, learn collaboratively, and contribute positively within our community. We accomplish this by using the five com competencies you'll see on the right, um, from the Collaborative of Academic and Social Emotional Learning, which is an evidence-based framework that we use in CVSD to guide our SEL efforts. Next slide, Lynn. Thank you so much. You might be asking yourself, why focus on social emotional learning? As you may know, research tells us that students' academic success is positively correlated with social emotional well-being. Therefore, we must start with Maslow's hierarchy of needs to ensure that our students are confident learners. Research also shows that once these fundamental needs are met, students are able to attend to the academic learning skills outlined in Bloom's hierarchy of learning. Our students need to feel safe, have a sense of belonging, and feel confident in order to understand concepts, apply knowledge, and evaluate the world around them. In an essence, students have to Maslow before they can bloom. Later this evening, you will hear more about what each of our schools is doing to support the SEL of our students, staff, and communities. Thank you. So I'm Megan Roy, I'm the Director of Student Support Services, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about our um, diversity and equity uh, coaching work that's happening um, on a district level, and you'll hear a little bit more about that locally um, as well. Uh, you can advance, Lynn, thank you. Um, so similar looking at the uh, visual of trees in the district, um, diversity and equity is foundational to what we do, and. Um, it's not something that we can look at by itself as its own initiative. Um, we need to look at its impact on every part of our system um, to ensure success for all of our school community. Um, so all of our work both sits on a foundation of diversity and equity, but also our work is to look at all of our work through the lens of diversity and equity. You can advance, Lynn. Um, so the diversity and equity um, coaching team is led by Yaz Gordon and Vicki Nelson. They co-lead um, our group of coaches. Um, I participate on this team as a central office rep, um, as, it, as is also a rep from each um, one of our schools um, and two from CBU, just given its size. So that's our list of coaches. And this group has been meeting weekly. Um, we uh, have spent some time and actually just finished up today uh, going through a um, equity facilitator training to ground ourselves in how to support teams with this work. Thank you. Um, and so this team, um, the goal is, to, is for each building coach to work with their administrators to organize school level work, um, including building diversity and equity teams. So um, 
our job is to connect educators to current resources and opportunities for their own professional learning, um, to support diversity and equity groups within our systems and connect with um, community members who want to be part of that work, um, to, to promote actionable steps uh, within our buildings, develop a system of accountability for implementing those action steps, collaborate with teams across the district on a regular basis, um, support the development of a systematic approach to increasing equitable opportunities, and really to interrupt, disrupt, and dismantle systemic racism within our schools. In the last slide. Um, and a message that we think it's important for everyone to know is um, this coaching model complements but doesn't replace um, the CVSD diversity and equity and inclusion uh, position, uh, which is in process. Um, and the work can't be conducted in isolation. It's gonna take a village to interrupt our structures and create equitable opportunities for all students. Um, this work will happen alongside with other opportunities to bring in local, state, national presenters. Um, and it's also important to know that this group on its own can't know everyone's story um, and by itself won't be able to represent all perspectives. Um, so part of our job is to empower the voices within our district. Thanks. Hello, I'm Jeff Evans. I'm the Director of Learning and Innovation for the district. Uh, and I'm gonna have the opportunity to speak about early literacy. You can go ahead and advance the slide, Len. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to make early literacy one of the priorities. It's foundational to all academic achievement, which has a direct correla correlation to physical and social and emotional and economic health. Uh, about two years ago, we had a district-wide audit conducted of our early literacy practices and systems. And from that grew the decision to hire Jensa Bushy, who was a literacy coordinator at one of our schools, to be the district literacy leader and uh, focus on these two goals that you're seeing that were identified in the audit. The first is teacher expertise, to increase teacher expertise and provide um, coaching and um, coordinating in schools. And then also a tighter alignment vertically of our curriculum as, they, as it applies to um, early literacy practices. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so far, we, uh, Jensa led a group of folks who designed the K-2 curriculum and aligned it. And uh, this includes a vision for all of K-4 and um, the early content, what to teach and how to teach, several um, guidance, a lot of guidance around that. And at the same time, um, we've had 78 teachers in our district take a uh, play called Mind, a course called Mind Play through the Stern Center, which is a comprehensive reading course for educators. And um, you can advance the next slide, please, Lynn. And then we had our literacy coaches meet with the Stern Center coach monthly to develop um, support systems and professional development that would go back into the schools to support all of those folks with the lessons learned through Mind Play in terms of its application in the classroom. Next slide, please. And so um, our next slides, uh, our next steps rather, are to fully implement the curriculum and develop the 3-4 literacy curriculum. I will say that um, due to COVID, some things have changed. We spent quite a bit of time, some of you have heard me talk about this in the early summer, um, tightly aligning the K-4 curriculum to be nimble enough to be delivered remotely, in person, or fully remote. And so that work um, did change the dynamics a little bit, but it has also advanced a lot of the work around 3-4. So we are in some ways uh, ahead of the curve that we had established. Then we really wanna start integrating units of study and start integrating social studies, science, other content areas into those practices. And then, um, turn our attention to the, um, the layers of support and intervention models and how those can be more robust based on the work that we've done with early literacy. Next slide. 
So that's the work that we're doing with early literacy. And I want to uh, thank all of you for the opportunity for us to highlight these three high leverage um, priorities within our systems. Uh, diversity and equity, early literacy, and social emotional learning. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so now what we would typically do <clears throat> is break out into each of, um, into groups based on the school. Um, and uh, you'll meet with the principals of, of your schools. They'll be, um, they typically have a presentation that they'll do and there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers. I would also like to really encourage you to share your thoughts on the thought exchange, especially after you've heard the presentations from tonight. Um, and those links you can find on the district um, website at the bottom of the, of the main page. So thank you for coming and um, we look forward to seeing you in the school conversations. Uh, if you need to know where those, um, where to find the links for those, those are also on the school website um, at the bottom of the page. <clears throat>